Welcome to the Interesting Podcast with Jedi Brian, episode number 27. This episode is uh, my friend Chris Buckholtz, who is a tattooer. He does tattoos. And we met when a friend of a friend got a tattoo and asked me to stop by while they were getting it. And I met this guy who's doing the tattoo, and we just super hit it off because there's Star Wars stuff all over his tattoo area. And uh, kind of became instant friends. So we decided to meet at a Starbucks and just geek out for a little bit. And uh, it was very interesting because I've always been interested in tattoos. I have two myself. Uh, but it was cool because he talks about the the art form of tattooing and how it's changing and different tools. And it's just a, a world and a community that I did not know anything about. So it's just cool, which is like the whole reason that I started this podcast was to talk to interesting people and make friends and stuff. Uh, but yeah, also, I've gotten quite a few messages from you. The new podcast that I'm launching is coming soon. I just have a ton of editing to do, um, but it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, this episode we talk a lot about Star Wars because we're both big fans. I think you've probably come to expect that from this show by now. But yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. Just uh, enjoy this episode, number 27, with tattooer Chris Buckholtz. Roll the theme song. Boom. Okay, now we're on. Cool. Boba Fett. You like Boba, Boba Fett. Fett. Explain this to me. <laughs> so, well, first of all, uh, uh-huh. yeah, I, I, f- I feel like before the Clone Wars and everything like that, I feel like Boba Fett was, everybody had their own interpretation of him. Yes. So you did, I did, everybody, had, like, and he looks cool. Like, he, he does look really cool. My, my, that What kills me about it is 1, 2, and 3 ruined Boba Fett because... <laughs> And, and when they did the the remakes of everything, so they had all these, I don't know, man. Like I've been such a big fan of Boba Fett, but obviously when Episode One, Two, and Three came out, I really stopped caring about Star Wars, which is horrible to say, but sure, it, it's so I'm here for you. True. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I just feel like the reason why Boba Fett was so important was because a he was a badass. Nobody knew anything about him. Sure. And then you're so like I said, like before. Would they do the remake in the '90s? Not, not, not the special, special editions. No, 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 the one before that, where it was just they just cleaned everything up. Yeah, that was in the '90s. Exactly. So like everybody still had that like, okay, we don't know anything about him. He's the coolest looking character besides Darth Vader. That's why everybody liked him, and I liked him because he was. Yeah, That's fair. You, that makes you, sense. You had this story in your head, and I, you know, I remember as a kid going and seeing episode four, five, and six when they did the special edition and when George Lucas was still messing with, um, you remember that, God, how old are you? I'm 25. Okay, I'm 32, so, like, do you remember the show, the, uh, the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles? Yes, of course. So when they were doing that, that's when they got all the ideas for episodes one and two and three. Right. And, like, that's why he did the special edition was to kind of figure out what he was going to do for one, two, and three, but then when they did that, it was just like, okay, it's cool that Boba Fett is there, like, they showed him as you know in episode four four as um just kind of in the background right Um, right but what killed me is like he sounds so cheesy man but like (laughs) seeing him flirt in java's palace you're like really oh yeah when a little touch your chin bit not not get not into that that you know that actually is the best reason i've heard for liking boba fett because you didn't know anything about him so you could make your own story with him exactly that's fair and that that is fair but but but, yeah i'm totally with you now he's everywhere yeah he's um, what they say in um, Robot Chicken, thanks, fanboys. It's so true. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, you know, you. I don't know, and that's what kills <laughs> me about Boba Fett is like he's my favorite. He'll always be. I have him tattooed on me. He's your favorite character, like of all. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I would say. Him. Okay. 
are, are we talking now or like see right now it's the death troopers <laughs> right obsessed right um, but yeah i'd say death troopers knife numb boba fett Nine characters numb. that nobody cares about nine numb I mean, is another favorite so of mine awesome it just nobody in the shop really nerds out like I do. When we talk about Star Wars, like I'm like, dude, there's this kid Brian, and I was like, he makes legit shit, and everybody's like, ah, eh, okay, and I show them, and they're like, that's a toy. I'm like, no, that's not a toy. That's him in that. That's right. So cool. That's right. And now I'm trying to get you in the Legion. Like I will show you the new world, my friend. So, explain to me. Yes. The pack that you get. You what was it? Five bills. Okay, what, the kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have what's called a kit, and then they have a complete ensemble. The kit is literally the raw form ABS armor. Okay. So you have to cut it out and build it and gotcha. everything. Like that. And that is a fraction of the cost to have it completed. Yeah, the complete because you want to throw up. Exactly, exactly. That's why I was like, I'll just figure it out. Yeah, you know, that's awesome. Like for so how did you do your clone trooper? Clone, I got off of. Um, I got it as a kit as well. The thing about the legions is they're like self-sustaining. Right. There are people within the legion that make parts for costumes. Oh. So like for instance, I have an imperial officer right, right. and the code cylinders, there's a guy in Spain who's in the 501st who makes the code cylinders. That's so so rad. you just go to him and they help each other. So there's a guy what, what named rank, uh, What rank are you? I'm a staff officer. Okay. I, I'm going to is I want to Is that the blue, all blue? That's the uh, two yellow, three blue. And I'm in black as opposed to oh, like. Oh, rad! Yeah, I'm that thinking rad. about getting um getting an upgrade. After seeing Krennic, I was like, I kind of want a cape. Capes are awesome. So, so wait, the rumors about them reshooting is that true or is that complete bullshit? Reshooting Rogue One? Yes. Uh, it is true, but it's nothing to be alarmed of because it's how movies are made. Well, and and here also, why does? I can't even think of his name. He's in Rebels. Forrest Whitaker's character? Oh, Saul Guerrero. Why is he a bald and now he has hair? I'm guessing that's two parts of the movie. Like, they first see him and he's, like, haired gotcha. up. And then something happens and he goes, all right, it's go time. Shaves his hair, you gotcha. know, like a change toward gotcha, the end, gotcha, climactic gotcha. thing. I can't it's wait. It's so soon. That is going to be the... I think I could die happy after that. It's going to like, be Episode 8, I'm, phenomenal. I'm stoked for. But to me, I feel like... This is literally the movie that Star Wars fans have been waiting for. I'm just so stoked that it's just new people. I like, know. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. really stoked for the blind guy. I uh, do, Chirut. I found uh, out yesterday that he was not blind in the script. Donnie Yen asked him to be blind after reading it. I just like how they, like they're. All right, and I know you love the new ones. I do. I hate. I mean, not the new ones. The episode one, two, and three. I do. I hate them. <laughs> um, but like, I like that it's going back to the force being an energy field and not an STD you get from your parents. <laughs> like, it, it, you know what I mean? Like, when, yeah. whenever in the uh, the International Two trailer, wherever they're putting the necklace on, she's like trusting the force, and I'm just like, Ugh. yes, yes. I don't know. And it's the, still uh, it's still that in the prequels. They what they did. All right, here we go. Here's the thing. Um, so the the official like deep down nitty-gritty of the force right. has never been explained publicly here's what we know at celebration six Kay. by the way you need to go to celebration it'll change I know, your life i know I trust know. me i'll it'll die change your life you will i'll die and go to you heaven. will and then it'll be the best thing ever last one was in london right correct Have the one before that, that was in anaheim yes okay all right um Continue. which we haven't seen in this i illegal know to watch. i know <laughs> uh celebration six seth green was there promoting detours which is a show that never happened unfortunately right. well george lucas showed up Unannounced, like, it was the greatest moment of my life. Imagine being in a theater of, like, thousands of people. Seeing God. And just, yeah, <laughs> and literally unannounced, while Seth Green is talking, George Lucas walks oh. out. The walls shook. To me, I'd either want to punch him or hug him. Probably right? both. <laughs> he, so, uh, Seth Green talked about when he first met George Lucas, they are talking about the robot chicken special. Right, right. And he's like, dude, midi-chlorians? Like, what, what is up with that? Right. And he goes, how, how much do you understand about molecular biology? And he goes, eh, a little bit. Right. And for the next hour and a half, he explained everything. And then Seth Green's like, okay, yeah, totally. Mini clones, I get it. So here's here's the latest thing from Dave Filoni that I've heard as an explanation. Who's, the, who's this? Dave Filoni is a creator of Clone Wars and Rebels and all the animation okay. stuff. All right. He was mentored by George Lucas for like a decade. Right. Well, the Force, everyone has it. It's right. a It's a thing. It's right. In all living cells, there is this energy field, this right. Force. The midichlorians are a symbiotic life form that speaks to you. It's like potential. Right. Okay, so look at the force as midichlorians as potential. A high midichlorian gotcha. count, highest potential. Anyone can punch someone, but no one can punch someone like Bruce Lee did. Right. So Bruce Lee would say has a high midichlorian count. 
He has more potential to do these things. Right. Some people are really good at football. Some people are Tom Brady. Right. You know? So it's like that. So the force is still this energy field that's in every living thing. I'm opening your mind, Chris. Yeah, it, <laughs> it does make sense. It, I, yeah. I, see, the thing is, though, is having to explain that, it makes sense. But they don't. Sure. Make, I think that that should have been a necessity in the movies because. I can agree. I, I like, I, to me, like, it, it does make sense. But sure. it, with that being said, like, you have characters like Leia. Yes. Who should have a high Metachlorian count. Right. She. Tech, she kind of does. Leia's a different thing because right. Leia, she is a Skywalker. You know, right. she's like son, daughter of the Chosen right, One. Right, right. She has, like in the books that aren't canon anymore, but right. a lot of the comics that are canon, she does have a connection to the Force. You see in episode sure. five. Sure. Like she's like, Luke, he's over there when right, they go right, pick him right, up. Right, right. So she has that sort of Force connection where right. it's like a less I mean, using the Force like physically and right. more... Like, she can feel when Han dies. Right. You know right, what right, I mean? Right. And, that, and that's kind of, like, how I, like... I mean, you can always explain shit like that. Like sure. It, but to me, it's like, you know, you have, like, episodes 4, 5, and 6 where they make absolutely no mention of that stuff. And you would think, like, right. two, two key characters that were during the Clone Wars would be like, yo, you have a Metachlorian count that's high as shit. So to even flip that, we're also looking at a... Um, the, the, uh, the, the Jedi are destroyed. So you only, there's only true. two technically left. Yeah, and, it's true. And, and you have these two characters that you would think would know, but obviously the only way of finding out is through a, what a blood test. Sure, correct? sure. So it does make sense in that aspect, but at the same time, I feel like as a, as a kid, doing good and doing great things, I feel like is a better promotion for doing positive stuff to be a Jedi as opposed to saying, yo, your parents fucked and you have, you know what I mean? Sure, I, like, I understand. I, I, it's, I, I, I feel like some as, things are better to be left unexplained. Exactly, and I feel I, like I understand. In, in Star Wars as a kid, you know, when I, dude, like the only thing that's been current besides Star Wars has been my family. Right. And like, I always knew that when I was a kid and I'm sure every Star Wars fan out there had that moment where you tried to get the remote control because you were oh, yeah. too lazy to get up. I did it yesterday. But, <laughs> but even as a kid, man, like they didn't have that explanation. So I felt like when I saw episodes one, two and three, I was really stoked on them. But at the same time, it's like, so what you're saying is I don't have a Metachlorian count and me you know, right. being a good person and not giving in to temptation. I don't know. That's it, it, that, No, that makes total sense because before, without the explanation, you're like, oh, you believe like, oh, I have this. But then when you're like, actually, there's a test to see if you do or don't. Right. And, I and see even, what you're saying. even then, like, so you said like, you know, like with, with people like Tom Brady and all these people that just have the natural gift. Yeah. Let's just say there is a Jedi who wants to be a Jedi and how can they get more? Is it more of a Metachlorian count? Like, I don't understand the Metachlorian theory at all. It's, it's, can well. You, can you get more? Is there, is it by you meditating to, and growing more like yes, that? Yes. You can gotcha. become more strong in the force by meditating. Like, look at, like a really good example of that mm -hmm. is Maz Kanata from episode seven. Okay. You know, she knows the force, but she's not a Jedi. Right. You know, she, I love th her. There was, oh my God, I'm obsessed. Is there are people that are upset with her. I'm like, dude, she's the new Yoda. Right. He's, Powerful. he's another good example of mystery needs to be kept like Bo Fett sure. because they purposely will never tell Yoda's backstory. We All don't right. even know his species. What about Yaddle? We know she's one of them. We don't know what they are. That's, see, that's, I hope they never, cause it weren't, so are they confirmed for what they're doing after nine? Uh, No. No, it's seven, Rogue One, eight, Han Solo, nine, and What's then the, is another spin-off. Is the Han Solo spin movie going to be about him and the Empire? Uh, maybe. Uh, That's the thing, because when they decanonized everything, right. they're now legends. Gotcha. But there's the whole thing, you know, there is some truth in legends, For so sure. they'll probably take maybe it was with the Empire. That'd be so cool. They might, th we know young Lando's going to be in it. Right, it's that, um, that kid. Donald Glover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we might see how Han won the Falcon. Awesome. How many Star Wars tattoos do you have? A lot. Because you've got your, your got, Rubik's Cube got, fingers. Yeah, I've got Star Wars on my knuckles, Sith and Jedi on my hands, on the heels of my hands, Empire Jedi, or Empire Rebellion on my lower knuckles, the Force, uh, the Death Star on my temple, Boba Fett on my right arm, a Scout on my left chestish area. area. <laughs> uh, I've got a Leia tattoo on my leg, oh, right uh, on. a Star Wars BFF tattoo. It just says... S W B F F apostrophe S because it's so stupid. That's awesome. <laughs> I think that's it. I want to get a Death Trooper. I think that's going to be my uh, my. I'm going to have a buddy of mine in San Francisco do it. Cause yeah. He's just that dude's. Ugh. 
Yeah. <laughs> he has so he has all he has almost every single one of those master replica helmets. But yeah, he's that dude's obsessed with Star Wars just like you and I are. He's, sure. He goes to a uh, Rancho Obi Wan. Oh the time. my God! They just had their gala last week, and I was like, I wish I was yeah, there. He, he's, he was telling me I needed to come out for that, but it's like it's like bucket list worthy. It's it, it's an entire museum of Star Wars oh merchandise. Yeah, he says it's an. Well, what sucks is when I went out there, I was gonna try to go, but I just was being an idiot and wasn't thinking about it. But whenever I was driving from San Francisco to where he lived, which was north of San Francisco, we would uh-huh. pass the. He's like, that's where you go, and I'm like. It's right there. <laughs> Let's go break in like fanboys. They they have uh, the last remains of Qui Gon Jinn from the set, the oh, funeral pyre. Wow. So they have like bits of his robe and like That's a buckle. Crazy. So do they sell stuff like that uh, from the sets? Yeah. Uh, yes, it's very rare because they usually go to a warehouse. Like right. there's a Lucasfilm warehouse of right, original right, right. props. But well, they, they were doing that. I, YouTube, they have a. They were doing. Uh, they were selling one of the. Uh, one of the stormtrooper helmets from a new hope yeah and they were doing uh leia's robe they had a bunch of stuff but that was the one that they, it was some youtube thing and it was like dude the freaking the stormtrooper helmet was so far i mean it'd be cool to be like yo i have it right it was so far gone sure they Ugh. there's a there's a company called the prop store mm-hmm. you go to like the prop store.com they're out of london right they sell props and things from movies and they have star wars ones every now and then like original storyboards from empire oh, and like like is that like couple grand very expensive oh yes that's so freaking crazy it'd be crazy to own something like that oh yeah there was a guy i had uh so i tattooed this group of kids and one of the kids was like oh yeah my dad loves star wars i'm like i mean everybody yeah everybody who doesn't <laughs> and she's like no he was in the movie and i guess he was one of the extras in a new hope what i was like yeah i'd be obsessed too Dude, yeah, he was, can you imagine? I couldn't imagine. Like, just to be like, and he had airtime too. I, yeah. I don't, I don't remember if she said it was, it was either one of the guys that was like, you know, not the guy that spoke to Luke whenever he put R2 in the X-Wing. It was, the, yeah. she, she, I don't know if she said it was that guy or just one of the guys working what? on the Y-Wings. I'm like, that has got to be the coolest crap ever. Just For like, real. That's me. That's me. So they don't let the people... I've always wondered, like, they don't let the people keep their shit, do they? No. Oh, my God. No. That's a, that's why it's really serious that somebody does, like, gets a piece. Like, oh don't get caught because you get arrested. For sure. <laughs> but, yeah, if you can be like, oh, here's the here's the knob at Luke Skywalker's that I kept, you know. Like, there are people who, luckily, the places that are real locations you can go to. And, like, you can go to Tanzania and, like, right, this you, is Tatooine sand. And, that's like, so that's the best part about it being real places. Right, right, right. Um, but as far as props, yeah. If somebody gets a piece, you're like, oh, a what? You have it? Yeah, that'd um, be so fucking awesome. Yeah, for real. I will uh, neither confirm nor deny that I have rocks from Skellig Michael. Sick. What, from where Luke Skywalker stood? Sick. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Maybe. I don't know. I, hashtag, who knows? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so fucking awesome. But you are a tattooer. Uh, yes, I am. Is there a difference between tattoo artist and tattooer, or is Big it just difference? I, I, really, I mean, this is just my own personal belief. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a tattooer is an individual that cares about the craft, and a tattoo artist is just somebody that's wanting the. Ta- I don't know, man. Okay. Like, we've gotten into debates about this at the shop, and yeah, just in general. And I feel like a tattooer is somebody who goes out, does their homework, cares. It's kind of like a barber and a hairstylist. Oh, you know what I mean? okay. I feel like hairstylists are people not necessarily women or men that they just try to tackle everything and a barber is specific to the craft of being that makes sense uh, you know and that's just my own personal like yeah yeah it, it, it's it's really frustrating because you got all these kids i'm not saying i've been into tattooing forever but it's you get people that come in and they're just like oh i can draw or oh my kid can draw or oh it's like that's that's only like a part of it you know sure and, and there's been multiple tattooers that can draw but they can't tattoo and then sure. there's been all, uh, other way around they can they can't draw for shit but they can tattoo their asses off you sure know, like technically like I've, I've seen tattoos that i'm like oh that is a very bad tattoo but the execution is flawless sure so but i am so interested in this because it's like it's its own community and oh, niche sure. and like it's it, a world it, it's definitely like with everything like like uh, star wars sure and everything like that there's 
there's always like kind of the dark and light things with certain tattooers you know like you got these the newer generation of tattooers that are more like portrait artists and realism stuff and you know I, I respect you know I respect any tattooer for what they do and the technical application but it's just like you have these tattoos that they could be rolling the dice with them that they, they could look good they could look bad sure same with um to, you know, and then you got people that just hate on traditional, people that hate on realism. Sure. Hate on Japan. Actually, Japanese is like the only, I feel like is the only tattoo style that people, like really good Japanese. Sure. They're just like, oh, that's beautiful. And yeah. But that's because the Japanese have been doing it for thousands of years. Yeah, for sure. They've got a knack for it and like the eye for what looks good on the body and sure. how it flows. And it's a very it's specific a, style I mean, as well. With, with, with with, with Star Wars and uh -huh. with tattooing, what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. Okay. So you've got people that just don't get it. And, like, you know, I spend a lot of my time and money, and that's why I told you this whole Death Trooper thing is very new to me. Yeah. Because <laughs> I spend my money on books and paintings, and sure. I just want to be the best I can. And it's just, right now, it's kind of like being in a rut. Like, I. I'm kind of like stumped on what to paint and what to draw. And it's like, I'm just going to buy some toys. Yeah. Just, cause, cause it's like, like when the Hobbit movies came out, yeah. like I would go and see them and I wouldn't necessarily draw Hobbit stuff. I would just be so pumped to draw because it unlocks your creativity. And I would accredit. That's why I said I would either want to punch George Lucas in the face or hug him. Is because right. I would definitely say the whole reason I started tattooing was because of what George Lucas accomplished. Star Wars. Sure. Not necessarily everything else but i'm talking the initial star wars like just i've drawn boba fett <laughs> so many times i've drawn stormtroopers and it's like that creativity gets me so pumped sure that it's just like uh, i just want it, it's not even necessarily me wanting to create it's just i want to draw and i want to draw sure Eagles, panthers sometimes I'll, I'll sneak in a star wars thing if i can but it's just i i uh yeah, Star Wars is definitely like the main motivation for me for tattooing. I mean, obviously, not as like I look at like a lot of Japanese and older stuff from the 30s. Like that's my favorite era of tattooing is probably the 1900s on. Sure. Um, but like you know, Star Wars is probably the main the catalyst for me wanting to be a tattooer. Did you start drawing and then painting the tattooing, or it's kind of long story. Uh, so when I was a kid drew on everything drew on myself drew on my legs drew on my hands everything i would come home with like you know fingertips all the way up all the way up my left arm <laughs> and then you know i don't you know when you would have like a, a textbook and the uh the uh teacher would say uh wrap it so like you can't yeah, oh yeah yeah so i would all that would be drawn on and then i would draw a little shit in the corners and then i would draw God, when I was a kid, I drew James Bond stuff for my dad and Star Wars stuff. And, you know, it's it, it was that. And then my senior year got around and it was like, I don't really know what I want to do. And then people that I really admired that were in my, in, my, in my school, sure, they all failed. They were all, you know, at college. And then they ended up back working at Walmart. And I was like, fuck this. There's no way. Right. So then I started doing the whole band thing. And then I went which was a it was awesome but it was like a complete waste of time but whatever <laughs> um and then i just yeah came back home and then literally drew for like a week and then went into some shop and just said yo i really want a tattoo sold myself and then just been kind of like like that really just constantly like you know it, at the end of the day you're selling yourself man yeah you know what absolutely I mean? like it's nowadays it's not necessary well it is but it isn't like i definitely have people that collect sure like, that come into the shop they want something from me or one of the guys i work with or even like the community of people that i know and then you have people that are like this is what i want and that's it and it's like at the end of the day man you got to sell yourself like sure it's it's like you could be the most talented guitarist or the most talented artist but if you have zero fucking people skills you are going to be broke. You're not going to do what you love. Sure. And, you know, I, and that's one thing that really frustrates me about tattooers. You know, not to say that I'm Mr. Hoity-toity, I'm the best of the best and any of that thing, but you have these 
younger kids that just want to do a specific style and then when somebody comes in wanting a script tattoo like don't get me wrong it's it's frustrating because i want to draw something sure but that's my bread and butter that's what make make pays the bills and you know, absolutely so you, you, you're not there is no job on this planet that you have to you're gonna do everything that you like there are tattooers that i know personally that get to do whatever they want whenever they want and that's awesome like right good on them but you know at at the end of the day, you're, you're keeping your clients happy. Sure. And that would, you know, that if, if they come and get a Japanese tattoo, awesome. If they come and get a traditional tattoo, awesome. But if they want some meaningful script or uh, an infinity sign, it's that's your bread and butter, man. And you yeah. can choose to be an asshole and not get that money, or you could be this dickhead that's like, I only do this. And it's like, that's kind of frustrating, man, because one of the most humbling experiences I've, I've had in tattooing was I got to see some of uh, Mike Malone's personal sketches and Mike Malone is like one of the he's a traditional dude right. and I looked at his sketchbooks not not books but like sketches that he had when I was in uh, Texas and it was like there's tribal there's you know cartoon characters there's traditional pieces there's lettering there's sure. you know what I mean so it's like you, you, you people like I feel like younger generations of tattooers, they kind of real think, and this is not just because I feel like when I say that, people think that it's oh, it's everybody. I, I, I'm in that generation. I'm in that younger generation. I've only been tattooing since 2000, like 10. Two, really? 2000, uh, 2008 or nine was when I started apprenticing, and I ended up in here in 2012, 13, something like that. Uh huh. But um, it's just it's people um you know i don't know man it t- tattooing is changing and it's changing at a rat like right now the new hot thing is uh, ipads really oh yeah dude ipad pros like it, we have a guy at our shop he doesn't even use paper anymore what yeah you draw it on the ipad you print it out and boom there's your there's your sketch you don't got to draw anymore I mean, I draw on the skin. Yeah. I like doing that. I like drawing on the skin if, if people will let me get away with it. Sure. Obviously, if it's something pretty big and asymmetrical, that's one thing. But I could draw a cross or an infinity sign or script on somebody's whatever. Sure. But, like, dude, iPads are like you. you and my, my mother and I were talking about this because, you know, she fucking hates Facebook. And <laughs> we, we all we all do. Um, but, you know, you, you got to keep up with the pack or you're going to get left behind. You know, no, Absolutely. Nobody uses acetates anymore. Like nobody you know like it's you, you got to keep up and like don't get me wrong there are people that are successful in their own right but you know i'm joe schmo nobody and it's you have to adapt or yeah especially in like an art form oh, you know that sure. is evolving it, it, but you know i'm trying to break that habit like the, I, the ipad thing is it's really crazy it's yeah. so weird it's weird drawing with a with a the pencil and the touch and yeah, you know, it's it, strange. It, it, if, if you just sit down and do it, you can do it. But it's it's definitely gets really frustrating because I like drawing on paper and I like and I and it's I don't know, I like it. Yeah, There's some people that don't like it, some people that do, but it, it's it's definitely weird. But tattooing is it's always going to change. It's yeah, it's, for sure. It's changing constantly. Everything from like the tools that we use. Like I remember, and I, you know, this is just—I don't even really think it's a thing anymore. It might still be, but with it, people were doing um, pneumatic machines, air compressed. What? Yeah, it was weird. Uh, not using necessarily like coiled machines, and there's so many different variations of machines. There's these new machines that they look like pens. Actually, they look like these microphones. Like yeah. I, I just, just weird. That's so crazy. And you think like with technology that oh, obviously it, it's getting it's, it's, get, it's it getting spreads newer to and newer and new and there's always going to be somebody there's always going to be somebody trying to cash in on tattooing and that's of just course. how it's been you know like there's no really there's no set school to go to for tattooing and I think that's a good thing because you should apprentice you know right. like obviously you definitely go through the 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 right things like. Um, right courses uh sure cpr bloodborne pathogens just yeah, so yeah. you know everybody's got aids don't touch everything yeah you know? <laughs> and i i feel like that is definitely important um but i don't think people realize like oh he's got a license it's like that just means he knows that you have aids and not to touch it right yeah <laughs> but you know luckily we're at a shop where i can actually say yo i can't do that like if you came in wanting a portrait i can't do it i i don't have the brain 
capacity to do something realistic. We have other guys that do that, but I'm also not going to give you a product that I'm ashamed of. Sure. And I feel like that's a really hard thing for people to say is, oh, I, I, I can't do it. And it's like, dude, there's no harm in saying right. you can't do something. And if, if you want to do it, watch the person that's doing it. Because you guys all work in a shop. You guys should want to get along and want to everybody to succeed. But there's all it's it's all over the place, man. You got like competitive people in shops and it's just like that's so silly you guys are all looking after the same goal right and, uh there are people that are just so money hungry that they have to open like there's guys I've, there was a guy i don't remember where he was from maybe up north and he opened like four or five shops and it's like why? good lord <laughs> i mean I, I like here because there's only three shops right which is awesome and i like that tattooing is kind of outlawed out here um, which is good because it's kind of like the only the strongest survive. Right, um, right. But then you go up to Fort Myers and there's like, f- Jesus, 30 or 40 shops. And sure. There's one, always, I always hear my friends, yep, there's a new one over here and there's a new one over here. And it's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> gives It gives you a headache. And back to the whole, like, you know, positive Yoda thing. If you keep, like, focusing on the negative shit, that's all you're going to focus on. Yeah. And then you can get all like you can get butthurt all day long like the tattoo shows which you know i'm guilty i watch them you know i i I have friends that are on it i have people that i've known that are on it and it's just like that stuff drives me up the wall because (laughs) it's promoting a very there are good qualities and bad qualities like they don't necessarily talk about pricing which yeah you're right and they which is kind of it kind of sucks but they also promote it's it's a double edged sword man it like is it, it's it's they they i'm glad that there are more people getting tattooed but at the same time those there are certain people that should not get tattoos sure get like these soccer moms that think that it's you know a fucking louis vuitton purse that you can just buy it and not have to sit through it and it's like the whole purpose of getting a tattoo is being able to overcome physical pain with mental strength that's always what it's been obviously right people are like oh the tattoo is for me and it's like yeah that, that is true it's a tattoo that you're that you're getting for you but you're not getting it for you you're getting it to show people what you like right like a memorial tattoo is a prime example of that for sure if you're getting a tattoo that is you know a brother or a mom or a relative or anybody that has passed away you're not you're obviously it's on you but you're getting it to show people that your mom dad friend relative means a lot to you absolutely but it's it's you know uh, (laughs) it's good and bad it's good because like there are people that are now getting into tattooing that should be but you know for every one good tattooer there is about ten thousand shitty ones sure and it's but that's with everything absolutely Uh, even being a star wars nerd Uh, for sure like there there are people that that are like oh i love star wars and it's like okay let's talk and then it's like you talk to them and it's like you're you know what i mean you're it's talking a, yeah it's like, like you don't really like, you star, don't like wars. star wars at all. you, you just you, you just, like the idea and like one and a half movies uh, you know, and then that's kind of that and that's why i kind of fear going to those conventions man it's, it's just like i'm gonna get so pissed off because it's like star wars means so much to me but you like not necessarily like a poser but you know what i mean yeah oh yeah it, it's just trust like, me you don't really, you don't <laughs> really you like it i got thrown in trash cans in high school because right. i carried around the star wars visual dictionary awesome so when i see people that like Ooh, have a star wars shirt and i was like do you know do you know who job of the hut is and if they can't i'm like i died for you yeah. <laughs> there, there are people that like like you know i've always asked like the question of uh who's on the super star destroyer bounty hunter wise and yeah they're just like uh Hold on, let me think. It's like, no, it shouldn't be let me think. It should be Boba Fett, IGD8, Dengar, Zuckus, Forlom, and Bosk. Beautiful. Beautiful. I don't know. It's I was waiting for you to say Forlom. I'm not going to lie. Oh, he's awesome. <laughs> well, which one? Because obviously the 1980s toys have them it's switched true. around. It's true. Um, but, yeah, man, it's... it's I, I, you know it, what I love and about... St- uh, and to me, Star Wars is it's getting more and more washed out along with tattooing you know my two favorite things are getting more and more washed out (laughs) and more pop culture like i see all these you know this is this goes back to me saying that i'm only collecting one thing and that's the death troopers right i don't like that they're doing like you know star wars and transformers and i i'm with you you when you when you get a ray like connects 
You're like, what is so going on? <laughs> and it's just, it, it kind of, it kind of takes away the magic. And that's literally like me collecting these death troopers. It's like, you can't just get the individual ones. You've got to spend all this money on, and it's, it's so frustrating. It is. But that's kind of the stuff that like, I see like the t-shirts online. Yeah. Um, for like, like that show Stranger Things, which is the greatest oh, show Oh, so good. Ever, so good. Ever. We can talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like, you know, they have like all these shirts and it's like, they did like uh, remember that band Gorillas? Yes. They, how they did like the all, all the all character the characters faces. of them? And it's just like that's why can't you be original? You know right. what I mean? Like why why is it got to be? Not that Stranger Things is original by any means. Sure. Um, but it's just you have these things that are just so I don't know, man. I see. I see what you're saying. All the reboots and stuff. It, it's just killing. Yeah. Like, there's no such thing as an original concept. When there's like movies that are original, nobody gives a shit about. Like I feel like true. District Nine and Chappie oh, were just so like good. so good. But people are like, eh, yeah. I don't know. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? It's Give them what they like already, as opposed to it, introducing something new. Exactly. Agreed. And it's like there's so many movies that they're redoing. Like they just, I just saw the trailer for the new Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. And it's like, um, it looks cool. Like I saw Jungle Book, and I was kind of like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird hearing Christopher Walken sing. Yeah, <laughs> good point. So, and then the cowbell oh, at so the front. Oh, fucking weird. Did uh, you you know what I love most about tattoo tattooers, uh-huh. is you're like, I haven't met one that isn't an all around artist. Like you paint, right. you draw, like you're yeah. legit. You are an artist, 100. percent And tattoo is such a specific medium. Right. Like and you're I, using needles and, and ink and, to and that's and that's the thing. Is there there are people that are that are they try to do everything and i feel like in each tattoo they're lacking something that's why i don't sure. do portraits i can't like there are tattoos you know not everybody there, you, you can't do a perfect tattoo all the time it, it takes years and years to master that craft and yeah, yeah. Then there you know we do have our off days but yeah I, I, and i wish more people were like that i wish more people would be like yo i can't do this or i can't do that absolutely and then they come into our shop and they're like oh i got this and i'm like <laughs> Why? What the fuck are you thinking, dude? Like, yeah. And then they're like, "Oh, I blame it on the artist." And it's like, unless he has a gun to your head, it's true. You could have said no at any point. That, that's why those uh, the competitive like ink mastering shows. I'm like, see, I would never want to do it because if you get a tattoo, they're gonna rip it to shreds see, on TV. See, and, and this <laughs> you'll be like, ki- the eye is off. This is what kills me about those shows, <laughs> and and even at like tattoo conventions and stuff, man, is all these awards, and it's like. I don't know. People are probably gonna get mad, like mad, <laughs> saying me saying this, but it's like I said, that, I like Jar Jar, so I think you're yeah, safe. Yeah, <laughs> it totally defeats the purpose of being a tattooer, man. Like, my goal is if you're getting tattooed by me, there's no judges, there's right. no good or bad. If you're happy, then fuck it. You know Absolutely. What I mean? Obviously, I need to do it a, a good, technically sound tattoo that's gonna last a lifetime. Mm-hmm. But then it's like you got these people that are like judging, 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 and it's like awards, and it's like, you know, who? Who really cares, man? Sure. Like, people are like award-winning tattooer, and it's like, or tattoo artist that's never an award-winning <laughs> tattooer. But it's like, who the fuck cares? Like, I really don't, like, as long as you're a rad person and you book good quality tattoos out, if you're award-winning, great, cool. Sure. But that's not my thing. I don't give a fuck about awards. And I've, you know, it just doesn't, it's not, it's not something appealing to me. And it's like, you're, sure. tr- you're starting to turn it into a sport. True, absolutely. You and then I mean? in competition, sometimes you can lose the art. For sure. And, and it's just like, okay, I got I to, gotta, you know, attend to what I want to do. And at the end of the day, it's what you want. You know what I mean? Obviously, sure. I'm there for artistic guidance. Be like, yo, you probably shouldn't do a, a foot of white on you or you shouldn't do, you know, because we, we fucking live in Florida, man. You yeah. Know, you, you, you get one of these soccer moms or these old, old retired people that have... They want a chunk of white on them, and it's like, yo, you know, you mix white with skin with sunlight, you're not going to have a white tattoo. It's going to turn yellow because the pigments. So, but, you know, it is what it is. I I feel like tattooing, it's it's as good as it's going to get. It's going to get better. It's going to get worse. There's going to be people that are always going to want a handout. There's going to be always... There's always going to be, for every one good thing, there's a thousand things waiting to destroy it. And if you consume yourself with... Episodes one, two, and three. <laughs> you know, it's, How dare you, it, sir? It's, 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 but but you love it, and I think no, that's I, cool. I think I, that's cool. I that know you what you mean. <laughs> and and I, it's just 
<laughs> yeah, tattooing is great, but it's it it definitely has been tarnished. But that's with everything. For sure, there's any, not, there's, any art there's, form, there's not not even necessarily art form. There's not any one community. Thing, <laughs> one, one thing that is like, oh, it's perfect. It's like no, people are gonna hate it. Absolutely, people are gonna try to fuck it up. Not everything is for everyone. No, and there not. will be people that will come in with other motives. Like there are people that will start tattooing for money because they know there's money for when sure. they won't care and, about the art and, and that's definitely me like obviously yo like i want to get like if it was all about the art for me great sure it, it is a, it, obviously i do enjoy tattooing but i also like having a roof over it's my head it's still a job it, exactly sure. i like having a roof over my head i like being able to take my girlfriend out to to dinner or absolutely to surprise her with a fucking present of something that you know what I mean? It's just I, for sure. I, yeah, I, you have to. You also have to be realistic about it. You still have bills for sure. And people, you know? a lot of people don't realize that. They're like, oh, it's, I, I feel like, and it, it, people are starting to catch on to this. Yeah. But a lot of people are. They just think it's a hobby, and it's like, yo, I still like got to pay my bills. Like, you know, people are Absolutely. like, oh, the tattoo is that much, and it's like, you know, we we're not using the same needle. We're not using gr- crap ink. Sure. You know what I mean? And it's obviously. You know, with anything, luxury cars, clothes, shoes, backpacks, whatever, good stuff costs money. Absolutely. You get what you pay for. Exactly. And and, and that's what a lot of people don't realize. And then they'll be like, oh, you know, that that tattoo was too much. And it's like, all right, well, I don't have a gun to your head. You can go somewhere else. Absolutely. And if it it happens, great. Good for you. But I'm not going to bend my prices because I think... I, I look desperate. And I need money. Right. So here's a question I always had: Are tattooers are tattooers like barbers in that you pay for like your booth and you're there, and then you get there, money from a, your every, things? Every or? shop is different. Yeah. Man. Like you know, some shops are fifty fifty. Some okay. shops are booth rent. Um, it just depends on the shop. And, okay. Because I remember you telling me you like went to different places and tattooed. I was like, how does that work? Well, usually what they do is it's like a guest spot. Okay. And it's usually a percentage thing. But I, I've never worked at a shop where it has been a booth rent. It's always been percentage. Oh, and, cool, cool. Uh, same, but but then you also have conventions where it's you're did doling out money, kind of like a booth rent. Yeah, yeah. And then so like a booth is like four to six hundred bucks, and then you keep everything. Right. But they do right. Some, they okay. supply you with stuff, but it's nothing like lights and sure. Like, they, they barely supply you with a chair. But uh, I love conventions. That's probably some of my favorite things is being able to be in a new place and sure. eat different food and meet different people and you know have have your have your work on people that you might have never have met. Yeah. And that's that's probably one of the most rewarding things is having people get tattoos that uh, I would never normally tattoo and. It's cool, right? It's there's cool. there's a, there's a tattoo wing at every celebration. Yeah, there's a. I think there's a few. There's a tattooer. I know. I don't know if he does celebration or, uh, in uh, in uh, Cape Coral. I know he does a lot of the Star Wars events and stuff like that. And I think that's cool. I would love to tattoo more nerds. That'd right? be awesome. I mean, I would. It's it's fun always trying to to create a new Star Wars tattoo. I've done a few. I've done a a few Star Wars paintings, and and it's I. You, I don't want to. Uh, it's it's a double edged sword because I don't want to be known as the dude that just does Star Wars tattoos. Sure. There are tattooers that they kind of get pigeonholed into just doing Disney stuff or yeah, just doing good point. teeny single needle stuff. Or you know, it would be great though. That people just be like, "Yo, I want a Star Wars tattoo," but then it's like you start to get these Star Wars ideas, and it's like they're so ridiculous. Like the Transformers, like the Sugar Skulls and sure. Star Wars. I don't like those. I'll do them. Sure. You know, I'll do them. It's but it's like. If you want an original Star Wars idea, we can make something happen. I, sure. I, I mean, I'm a big fan of, like, roses. So, obviously, every single rose I'm going to do, I'm going to try to integrate it with a Star Wars thing. I'm actually trying to think of a painting right now to do of a traditional version of a Death Trooper. And I, I would like to get those out before the new movie comes out. So, but... What was the first tattoo you ever did? Oh, my... I did? You did. Do you remember it? Oh, yeah. It was... Uh, it, was my, <laughs> it starts with... Uh, the <laughs> guy... Well, it was, dude, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready at all. Of like, course. I, I kind of got thrown into it. it, but there wasn't a gun to my head. I, you you kind of get eager beaver. And you're sure. Like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, I got this. But the guy wanted it on the back of his knee, which I just recently got tattooed, and it's the worst. Oh, it's, it's just a ton of nerves, but ton of nerves, and it's the worst. Like, I, it's almost been three weeks, and I can finally bend my, like, finally bend my leg oh. and i had to be like you know legs straight out when i was tattooing and it yeah. was just like fuck this <laughs> but um yeah um back of the knee first tattoo i ever did and it probably is the worst 
It's, it's horrible. Oh, man. But it's whatever, man. Yeah. I mean, you learn. You, you and, and, and that's the thing is, and it's kind of crazy to think about, is your mistakes are on somebody forever. And You're like, I haven't slept since. <laughs> I've slept. <laughs> but it's, you know what I mean? You grow from it. Absolutely. You, 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 uh, you know, I'd hate to go back to where I came from because I'm sure there's a lot of crappy tattoos that I've done. That's everybody. There's no tattooer on this planet that shit out perfect tattoos since day one. Absolutely. You know, there's no tattooer out there that has done a ba- you know oh i've never done a bad tattoo i'm like you are full of shit right <laughs> you every, are lying every, every tattooer has done a bad tattoo every everybody remembers their worst tattoo i do yeah it was done in fort myers what it was, was it a, it was on a germ i don't remember the design <laughs> but i <laughs> do like remember blocked it out <laughs> the girl couldn't she wouldn't and and that's the thing i think that a lot of people need to focus on is that tattooing it's only 40% me. The other 60% is on you. Like, obviously, I'm designing it. I'm tattooing it. I'm applying it. Boom. But the second you leave, it is up to, for, to you to make sure that the tattoo lasts. Right. That you take care of it. Absolutely. That you don't pick at it. You know what I mean? Yeah, don't and go I, to the and, beach. And, but then you got these people that are like, oh, my God, it's, you know, infected. And it's your fault. It's like, was it infected when you got here? And I get that, obviously, an infection takes time. Sure. But as long as you're taking care of it, there's no infection to be had. It's true. They serve. They have creams. You're supposed to keep creams, it moisturized they have and all that stuff. They have, you know, we use a different thing at our shop called Tacoderm, which is like a saran wrap you leave on for 24 to 48 hours, and it's gotcha, the okay. greatest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's. I wish people would would realize that, you know, and I do have clients that it's happened. They've got they've got something has happened. Yeah. And uh, they were like. Oh, it's my fault. And I was like, thank God. I'm going to want to help them. I'm not going to be like, okay, you fucked yeah, up. Yeah, too bad. Fuck off. When you walk out, you're out. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, I, I definitely make my, my opinion there for people to be like, yo, if you ever need my help, I'm here. Sure. Don't don't think that I'm going to be an asshole and be like, what the fuck did you do? Yeah. I'll be like, what the fuck did you do? And here's how to correct it. What was the first tattoo you ever got? I got. Because you've got a lot. I convinced my mom that getting tattooed by my art teacher's brother out of his oh no <laughs> out of his out of his kitchen was super sterile oh yeah i was an idiot it's, it's, it's some crap on my back i mean my first jesus christ my first 10 tattoos i hate the first tattoo i got that i actually liked was from a tattooer named sean mcdonald out in uh he was in Loveland. Now he's in Fort Collins, but he did my right hand, and that was the first tattoo I'd ever say that I still to this day love. Really? And it's everything from the, you know, I didn't know who the fuck he was, and then it was like I, li- I liked him as a tattooer. He was a good, you know, huge Star Wars nerd. This dude, it's like there's there's obviously very rare to find people like you that are <laughs> love for Star Wars. But what's crazy, though, because in every single fucking tattoo shop, there is one diehard tattooer that's like oh my god i love star wars because there's like people like like sean he was a big star wars fan and then he tattooed my hand and i think that's kind of why we bonded and i still to this day talk to him and that was geez that's awesome 32 it's nine or a 10 year old hand tattoo and it still looks great but um yeah i mean i i I uh, I have a lot of bad tattoos and that sucks because <laughs> they're you know like my throat I don't like my 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 torso is garbage um, I've got a lot of tattoos on my arms that I don't like but it's also comes with maturity like sure. as far as in it in the tattoo world like you know it all depends on what you're wanting to accomplish because you know there's certain tattoos that I'd be like oh I wouldn't want that but that that's not you can't judge like everybody it's 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 you know. I'll never understand why certain people get certain tattoos, but there are tattoos that I'm like, yo, you're going to regret that. Like there's, there was a guy, the weirdest tattoo I ever did was a set of suspenders on a guy. And I'm like, like actual, like as if they were on suspenders, it's on my Instagram. (laughs) And it's like, I just don't, I don't get it. I, I did it. I told the dude, I was like, yo, this is flat out the dumbest thing I've ever heard. (laughs) And he was just like, Oh, got it anyways. And I'm like, whatever man i didn't get to finish it sure uh, and i'm sure he's out there with a half done suspender <laughs> tattoo but you know sure to each their own yeah, yeah yeah but i mean i i kind of and i also kind of learned from what i had gotten tattooed and i try to pass that knowledge on to people that are receptive of it sure like, yo this is not gonna work this is oh how do you know like well let's see i've got almost a good chunk of my body tattooed i'm just right. about done and I could tell you that I'm, I'm starting to get stuff lasered off now. 
which is horrible. I was about, how is that? So you ha- to, you have had stuff from removed. My, my, the sh- stuff on my shins, I've gotten lasered, and it's just. Does it smell bad? No, it, there's not necessarily a smell. It, it's it's horrible. Yeah. It's, the healing process is not that bad, but the actual if you were to cram like a half an hour tattoo into 15 seconds is pretty much what it feels oh, like. Oh god! You know, you know when somebody like when you were a kid would do like the rubber band between your index and middle finger and then snap it on you. Yes. You You know that one really like "Mm," that hurt. Yes. That's how it feels the whole time. Oh dear. And it gets increasingly worse. I have a, I have one on my shin that's the size of a football that I'm getting lasered and it's terrible. Oh, yeah. That is horrible. Oh man. And it makes a noise too, right? It's like really loud. It's It's like a lasering skin. How does that work? uh, Because tattoos are like multiple layers deep. It's a second layer of skin. The second dermis layer is where it's at. Okay. Um, and it get basically what the laser does is it hits the skin and breaks up the pigment so then it just eventually just disappears does it like disappears like properly or there's like um, stuff because i feel like i mean i don't know but i feel like there's like scars left over in the form of the tattoo different different strokes for different folks man i've seen yeah. them completely disappear and not leave scars because sure. no, no two people are the same of course so it's like i might be fine but you you know i don't know i don't know if it has to do with like uh what your background is like if you're sure white, black native american puerto rican cuban irish i don't sure. know what i don't know what the stipulations are i mean i've gotten the two on my shins i've gotten hit once mm-hmm. i mean i want to get them completely not gone i'm obviously right. gonna i'm not like uh it's for my work sure but I, i'm gonna get them covered and i plan on doing my other shin too but it's it's rough man that was gonna be my other question can you tattoo over the oh, yeah. that you've uh, usually and this is from what obviously this is a new field. It's like permanent yep. makeup, man. Of like course, people seem to think like, oh, you're a tattooer, you do permanent makeup. I'm like, hell, fucking no. I don't. Yeah. Like, I don't like. T- <laughs> I've only did. I've only tattooed one face, and that was because the guy had, he had his, I, I, he had his hands, his knuckles, both sleeves. He had his throat and his chest done, and I was oh. like, all right, I'll tattoo you. Obviously, you're fine where you're at. But if you if you came in and were like, oh, I want a face tattoo, I'd be like, no, no way. You don't got enough tattoos. That might sound dickish, but it's also me learning because it hurts, right? It doesn't hurt, man. Like you've got temple tattoos. I, I mean, I yeah, I have temples, my sideburns. I'm, I'm almost done with my head, and in a weird way, man, people start to look at you weird, and it's and sure. it, some people can't deal with that, and like oh, I, I see what you're saying because like here in Naples, like people, it's 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 good and bad. They're obviously, we're in. There's a lot of white people here. Yes. So when they see a kid that's covered in tattoos, they they don't act like I'm even here, which is awesome because yeah. I don't. <laughs> when people come up to you when you're heavily tattooed, people seem to think it's like I'm an action figure. Like they can just touch me and be like, "Oh my god, let me look at your arms." And it's like, it happens. Weird. Oh, dude, it's all the time. Really? All the time. That's so strange. Like whenever I went, used to go. When I first came here, like I went to the mall and I had people tell me. I have too many tattoos. You're going to regret that. And I'm just like, we, I'm not, at, I, I didn't go up to you and say, yo, may I get your opinion? Like, yeah. I had a lady when I was 20, 21, and I just had my forearm done. And she looked at me and she was like, you're a disgrace to your family. And I'm like, good Word. Lord. <laughs> But it's like, what's wrong with people? You, you can't make everybody happy. Of course. And there are going to be people that hate tattoos. And I love that. Yeah. I love that. You people don't say. Have, <laughs> I, well, here, I love that people love hate tattoos because I don't have to tattoo them. Good point. You know what I mean? It's a good point. And it's like, it's completely okay that you don't like tattoos. Sure. There are certain things that I don't like, but it's, I, I just wish people would, sh- it's, unless I fucking ask you, it's none, yeah. of, it's none of your business. <laughs> it's and, true. And, ah. Uh, it's it's frustrating. It is nice though. Like I like that people. They, I do have older people that are like, oh my god, which one hurt? And that's like, that's fine. But it's like when people start yelling at you, oh my god, you're so tatted. Ugh. I don't have a response Shut for that. Up. <laughs> Talk to me like a person. And it's and I don't mind talking to people about tattoos. It does get frustrating though sometimes, because you know you get people that come up to you and it's like you know I'm trying to enjoy my day off and you know where do you work? Starbucks. Do you want to talk about coffee? Right. Not right. really. I mean, I do love, I like talking about about tattooing, and I don't mind giving you five minutes of my time, but if it starts to turn into a consultation where I'm there for an hour, it's right. like, dude, I, 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 this is my day off. You, here's my card. And that's what I, I sometimes just give people my card and say, yo, this is who I get tattooed by. Right. Because 
people show up sometimes. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Sure. But it's you know and just just like anybody else, I enjoy my days off. For sure. Like, and that's another thing where like it when it's not really a conversation anymore. It's right. just them trying to get things. Oh, yeah. You know, that's so strange. Pricing, pricing, price. Like I've probably given out, Jesus, let's just, let's just be five five thousand cards. I've maybe tattooed two people. You know what I that's, mean? That's that's the other thing is like the amount of cancellations in your line of work. All the time. Because everyone would be like, yeah, sure. You put them in the books, and then the day of, they don't show up. Well, then that's why we take deposits, and our deposits are that makes sense. Hundred bucks, and if you don't show up, you don't get your deposit back. Sure. You know, and even if you call me five minutes after and say, yo, I can't make it, be like, all right, well, I'm keeping your hundred dollars because I don't have the luxury of a paycheck. Sure. Like if 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 I if the tattoo is five hundred bucks and you don't show up. I only make fifty dollars, and now I, you know, sure, I got bills to pay, and money doesn't fall out of the sky or grow on trees. Absolutely. So, well, I have to ask, which one hurt the worst? Head. Really? Like the on the actual on skull, the dome? It's so terrible. It's <laughs> worse than your throat. Yeah, this was cake. But I, but see, the thing is, it's all about who you get tattooed by, man. Like I got sure. my ha- my hands tattooed by two different tattooers. My left one, me. Right one, horrible. Really? No, that he- makes sense. The head was the worst the worst p- feeling ever i mean i've got i've got the top of my head and then i'm done yeah but I, you know it's it's terrible man like it's funny because the guy i travel with he's like man chris is just i'm a different i'm a completely different person when i'm getting tattooed i hate it <laughs> i love having them but really? i hate getting them that's it's bad cr- that's funny but see you got these people like oh, i love the pain and it's like yeah, I'm not one of those. Well, but you know, like it's people that I think when I started tattooing is when tattoos hurt. But then again, you <laughs> could probably talk to the people that have tattooed me, and they're probably like, "Dude, you have always sat like dog shit." I mean, the small ones are fine, but like when uh, my my buddy from Fort Collins did the back of my knee when I when he was here recently, I'm pretty sure I probably sat like dog shit. It yeah. fucking hurts. It does. <laughs> so and it's like all I got are painful spots. I've got the top of my head. My armpits, my ribs. Oh, uh, your armpit? Uh, yeah. Ah, oh, dude. Uh, my both my butt cheeks are still open. Inner, <laughs> inner thigh. Inner thigh is horrible too. Uh, yeah. But the, the worst in order would probably be head, my palms, and then my kneecap. Oh. The palms are terrible. Dude, oh, yeah, because there's a ton of feeling there mm-hmm. as well. Oh. I did. I did my girlfriend's palm, and she was like. Sh- it sucked because I couldn't look at her when I was doing it, so I like was just right. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna get this done as fast as possible. But in your head, you're like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it sucks, man. And that's and that's another thing that being a tattooer, and it goes both ways, man. Like you don't want to hurt somebody you you care about. And sure. The person that, and, and even in the other in the other regards, like my girlfriend's got a big tattoo that I still have to finish, and it's like when you get comfortable with the person intimately. Sure. Tattoos t- some, s- seem to hurt more. So yeah. <laughs> it, you, you, you can't win. You're, you're more comfortable saying, ow, when you've been for around them. <laughs> sure. Where and before you walk in, you're like, no, I'm fine. It's good. Just well, go for I, it. And I've had people like, man, there was this lady I did a full rib panel on, and it was like oh. one setting, cherry blossom from the back of her shoulder all the way to her to her hip. Wow. Solid. And I was just like, and she sat like it was crazy, but then you get people that get like their wrist tattooed, and they're sweating bullets, and like yeah. the world's going to end. That's so, crazy. Yeah. I've got two. I got one on my chest. That was my first one. Right. It's on my chest. It's real tiny. Right. And uh, when I <laughs> I got it done at Looking Glass okay. in Bonita. Yeah, and yeah. the guy's name is Thor. I was like, Great oh, this name. is cool. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and like a skinny white kid comes in. I was like, my first tattoo on my chest. And he goes, all right, let's let's do <laughs> it, I guess. And it, it was 15 minutes of awful. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's why when you said armpit, I was like, my armpit was on fire getting ch- a chest ch- tattoo. Chest wasn't fun either, man. I've got a big batch of garbage on my chest <laughs> that I need to get covered. I don't, I don't remember like I don't remember any tattoo being like eh. Yeah. Like it's <laughs> like they all hurt real bad. But, but it's it's that thing I've said before, man. It's being able like to show that you can put your mind somewhere else for a period of time and then be like this is what I got out of it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like when I got the the last the last time I got the side of my head done, like it was fucking horrible. And the girl that did it is a is a friend of mine from San Antonio. Well, now she's in Austin. She tattooed my girlfriend's chest too, and my girlfriend, he, she completely broke her. Like oh, she was man. crying, but it fucking sucks, man. Like, yeah, it hurts. It, and like with her, like I had to take, I tried not taking as many breaks, but it it just got to the point where like, man, 
my fucking head is killing me. And can we just take a few minutes? Can I get a Red Bull or something? I mean, you're like pinpoint. It's like staring at a screen for oh, so long. Your so, eyes are fixed. It's so, and you've got needles. And if they bleed, you got to do that. So bad. There's so much to tattooing that people don't think about. Like, no, you know, it's tattoo. And, but like, and, they, and it's just so many variables. Well, that and. And yeah, I'm sure, yeah, your arms, and you're holding a vibrating thing. Oh, yeah. Well, and you know, what's what's really kind of interesting, and I've seen this in a few interviews, people are also like, oh, me, 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 I, is everything sterile, da, 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 and it's like, what about me? Like, what about the tattooer? Like, you might have something, and I'm it's dealing true. with your blood. Like, Absolutely. It's not like you're cutting yourself and saying, here, it's yeah. me <laughs> inflicting pain on you, and Hopefully you sit still. Hopefully, you know. Yeah. You're, you're, it's, I don't know, man. It's it's always been the worry game and, like, the, the blame game. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. And I feel like and, uh, it's always like, oh, it's not my fault. It's like, yeah. Yeah. W- with any sort of service, you'll have that. For sure. You know, like, I, I, did, I owned a videography company a while back, and right. I did a bunch of weddings. Uh-huh. And... I had a client where I was like, here's what I'm going to do. Signed the contract, paid for it, gave right. it to them. They're like, oh, that's, that's not what we wanted. I was like, well, that's what you asked for, and I gave you what you asked for. So I'm sure tattoos as well. They're like, right. oh, I don't really like how this is. Be like, but this is what it's you said. Oh, so, dude. <laughs> I and showed you the outline. You were cool. Right. And, and, and luckily, I, you know, selling yourself, man. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and, I, and I've done that for mul- from, from people, and every tattooer is guilty of it. You can sell, you can sell anybody anything, man. Like, I, I've had people come in wanting one thing and leaving with something completely different. Like, a lady had a cover-up, and she wanted a hibiscus. And I jokingly said, let's do a crawling panther. And she left with a crawling panther, <laughs> completely stoked on it. You know sure. what I mean? Like, that's like, my brother has like four of those. He right. went in with an idea, and they're like, "Oh, well, you can't just walk in and get a tattoo." He goes, "All right, well, what can I get right now?" Like, oh, yeah. I guess this. That, that like with me, like I will, like you know, I love drawing under pressure. I love drawing on the spot, and you sure. know, I don't like spending. Like right now, like I could be at home drawing for my next tattoo, but I'd rather draw in front of the person. Plus, it makes them feel special when they're like, okay, I like this, I don't like this, I like this, I don't like this. Rather than me spending my entire Monday drawing and they're like, I don't like any of these. And I did that like a long time ago, and that was kind of the day I was like, I'm never doing that again. I drew six different versions of it. She didn't like any of them, and then the one I drew up in 30 seconds oh my God, I love that. And why? It's because she was here. It was because she was current. It's because. This is what I want. This is what I like. This is what I don't like. Sure, so, sure. And that makes the process easier, I think, for me and for some. You know, but there are tattooers that need time to draw. I have friends that, you know, they'll drop three different versions the night before, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. Is it true that tattoo artists, sometimes, if they don't want to do it, they'll hike the price up? Uh, yeah. I could lie about it. It's it's everybody's guilty of it. That's what I thought. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it because it's, no, it's an art. I, I, but I always I, wondered because like there are some people that are like, oh, that's fucked up. It's like no, it's not. Like, it's I, I make my own prices. That, Absolutely. That's my price. And if you don't like it, then I'm sorry. I don't know. And what it's to tell you. time and it's effort and supplies. Like, For sure. It's cool. Absolutely. But you know, we get when I, you know when I first started tattooing, obviously the stuff I wanted to push. What what's the the timeless quote? It takes money to make money. Absolutely. So like. Obviously, there there has I've been I've done free tattoos before, big, sure. huge. I did a full back piece for free, but I also had complete control over it. And it's like you have to show people that you're producing a product. And when people see me doing a big back piece, they're gonna be like, oh, well, fucking a. Obviously, I'm not gonna put yo this this tattoo is free, but it does take money to make money, and that's how you do it by 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 hooking people up and doing bigger projects and posting the stuff that you like and hooking up on stuff you know, that everything that you like. But I don't want to rip anybody off. But at the same time, I don't want to do something that's a fucking headache for a, a sure. deal. You sure. Know, like there's tattoos that I've done that it's just it's, my head hurts afterwards. And I'm just like, I want to make my money. Yeah, I'm absolutely. I'm not going to charge somebody $5,000 for a tattoo. But I'm not going to be like, yeah, 80 bucks for a half sleeve. Sure. That's not going to fucking happen. Because you still need to know what you're worth at absolutely. the end of the day. You can't you can't just be selling yourself. Because I see people do that. I'm like, yo, what, are you, what do you think you're worth? Sure. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, we need to there, – there needs to be compromise. You can't just be like, okay, I'm going to hook everybody up. It's like, no, man, like, you got to know what you're worth, and you, you can't just think – I mean, obviously, there are people out there that I've seen tattoos from that I'm like, it was that much. Sure. But there are also people it's, – it's a double-edged sword, man, because I do appreciate people that 
do tattoos and they hook people up but at the same time it's like i don't i don't want any handouts sure you know what i mean like i don't expect anybody to tattoo me for free i do i get tattooed for free yeah sure but i don't i if they, if they want me to pay it I don't ever go up to somebody and say, yo, you're doing this for free. Sure. It's, yeah, don't be a if, dick if, about if, it. If they say, and, and that's the same with me. If I say, yo, I'm going to do this for free, I stick to my fucking word. I'm not going to I'm not gonna all of a sudden be like, yo. But also, but here, at the same time, there's also been instances where I've priced out a tattoo, and then two years later, they're like, oh, is it still this much? And I'm like, no. Right. Yeah. Fucking years ago. Sure. Like, it, it, it is is time relative. It is what it is. Yeah. And it's by piece and by person, For circumstance, sure. like as with an artist and an art form. It is For sure. what it is. And I wish people would realize that, but. They will uh, now. <laughs> r- r- remember six years ago when you said that you'll do this? I'm like, I don't remember what I did yesterday. I have the, you're talking to the person with the worst memory ever, except for when it comes to Star Wars. Yeah. And fucking. Uh, right there with you. Uh, what is, do you have a favorite tattoo you've done? Like this one stuck out. I had a great time. I loved it. Like a pride. Because, you know, artists that you have, like, There's portfolios, so pictures, many, and, like... dude. Like, it, it, it varies, man, and I'm, I'm not going to I'm not gonna be like, oh, it's because it's on my girlfriend. Sure, my yeah, gr- absolutely. My girlfriend has a tooth on the back of her head that I did. Uh-huh. It's like, she cuts her hair really weird, so, like, pretty much from the notch of the skull down, she's got a little tooth. I fucking love that tattoo. <laughs> it's so simple, but so rad. But there are, like, there's this kid that I've, I've done both of his sleeves, and I love both of his arms. There's another kid that I've... There's so many, dude. That's um, good. There, there's, there's a back piece that's my profile picture on Instagram that I love. Oh yeah, yeah. And that was the first from start to finish back piece I've done. There's another girl that I'm doing this huge eagle tattoo on that I really like. That's a hard question, man. That's that's no, like that's a, that's actually a perfect answer because I'm like, oh, you know, what's a favorite? And the, you're like, the, a ton of stuff the, I've done. The, you're super a, proud there's of. There's a lot, but you know, there there has been times where I'm like, oh my god, this tattoo is the shit. But then again, it's like few years go by and i'm like eh, i don't really like that tattoo sure. anymore as like, things change you go through phases and, and, and you know that's 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 a good question I, there's a lot of tattoos right? that i've done that i really like I, but i also like to ha- bring people's ideas to life i think those those tattoos are super rewarding but also being able to have that ar- artistic freedom sure like there's the the kid that i told you that i did both of his arms he wanted a valkyrie girl on him and he literally said do whatever you want and it's sure. like cool so i get to put a shitload of roses in it you know, Valkyrie girl, all you need is the helmet and the wings and blonde hair. Sure. And that was that was a lot of fun doing that. Same, he has another tattoo on the inside of his arm of a, a hammer and a chisel, but I got to do roses and it's, you know what I mean? Like, sure. It's always good being able to... Yeah, Allow the artist to be artistic. For sure. And, but, but that's sure. with anybody. Nobody wants to, you know, do the same fucking shit over and over and over. Sure. Like, like dude, if I, I, I can't... I, Probably once to four thousand times a week, I'll be like, "Man, there's no fucking way I could work a regular job. There's no way I could be working at Walmart or KFC or Starbucks or construction." And I've worked all those jobs. I, I've done. I mean, I was pretty babied my whole fucking life, and I'm not gonna be like, "Oh, you know, I had a rough life," because I didn't. I sure. didn't have a rough life. I, I definitely work tooth and nail for tattooing. And I don't expect, like I said, I don't expect any handouts, but I've, I've, I did roofing and it was fucking terrible. Being on a roof in the middle of the summer with the sun beating down on you and you have to wear fucking shoes that are two inches thick yep. so your feet don't burn. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, thank God, th- think, think people that do that stuff, awesome, good on you, but like, I, there's no fucking way, dude. I'm gonna right. sh- I'll kill myself if I have to fucking work a regular job. Right, it's right. Like well, a, a nine to five. Yeah. Ugh. I can't imagine cubicles sound like the worst place in the world. Well, with me, like, dude, I'm very lucky that I I, I got to be work at 12, 12 to nine, man, and yeah. I fucking love it. It sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, it's it's awesome. It's I don't I don't take that shit for granted at all. I don't, sure. I'm not like oh, my life is so hard. Fuck that. I draw on somebody. Like, right. I have a cool <laughs> job. And I'm very lucky, I, and I thank every single person that gets tattooed by me. I try to sneak that in every tattoo I do. I just like, yo, thank you for getting tattooed, even if it's a little dinky tattoo all the way up to a complex back, a back piece or some tattoo that in my head I'm like, god damn it, why the fuck am I doing this? Right. <laughs> but it's at the end, there are tattoos that I do that are like, oh, my God, I fucking hate this tattoo. And then I'm done with it, and I'm like, all right, that was cool. Like, well, there's that tattoo I did recently of a uh, – Literally looks like a, a spirograph tattoo that was just complete line works and people 
love that geometric stuff. And in sure. my head, I'm like, motherfucker, I don't want to do this. <laughs> then I did it, and that's like, we're good. You know, that's and, a legit tattoo, man. Well, that's it's how it is with, like, portraits, man. And I, I hear a lot of portrait tattooers say that, that they're, like, through the whole tattoo, they're like, fuck, 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 fuck. And then that last 15 minutes, they're like, all right, all right. Sure. So sure. I, I don't think I could do that. With traditional stuff, it's like, all right, line work's done, looks good. All right, shading's done, looks good. With portraits, it's like layers and layers and layers. And then it's like the sure. last 15 minutes, you're finally happy with it. It's like, <laughs> I don't think I could do that. That's nuts. Yeah. Tattooing's so cool. It's, I, it's, a, it's such Star a... Star Wars is so cool. I mean, Star Wars is the coolest. We're not going to compare here. Yeah. I don't want to make you feel bad about your no, profession. No, no. <laughs> I, well, the thing is, is un, until the... The Galactic Empire, the Rebel Alliance, lands here on Earth, and I'm, and I'm like, all right, I quit. Right, right. <laughs> Which will never happen, but you don't know. It could be. I don't know. The 501st exists, so uh, it gets kind of close. That'd be so cool. I got to get you in, man. That'd be so Got to get cool. you in. It's the best. Uh, Star is Wars best. is so sick. But it's, yeah, tattooing Star Wars. Yeah. That's awesome. It's an exciting time. It's an exciting time to be I a think, Star Wars I think fan. I it's super. Like, and that's, that, that was what uh, I was talking to somebody about is it's like, it is super exciting to be Star Wars. It's like, it's like it's so Christmas sick. always it, now. It, it's, it's so crazy because it went from really good. I know you love it, but really bad. <laughs> I just feel like it went good, bad, and then it's like. I'll take again. I remember the day that Lucas sold it to Disney. I was pissed. Now, were you? I was like, do you know what this means? But, but, but see, the thing was, is I was pissed because I, was, I wasn't looking at it from a mature standpoint, which it seems like you were doing. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like, oh, fuck, Disney's going to do it. It's going to wash it out. But then if you think about it, you're like. Uh, Disney has infinity money. Yeah, it, it means could, that that literally means Star Wars is forever now. Well, Star Wars is forever, and it's it could you know could have gone both ways. Sure, I absolutely. Was, I, I feel like every single Star Wars fan was like, oh my god, this might suck. We, we might see <laughs> Mickey Mouse in this, but at the same time, it I, you got to look at their you go, you have to look at their report card, man. Look at La what Mar they did with the Marvel. Marvel movies. Fucking rule. Oh yes, like they're they're. I don't think any of them are bad. Agreed. Like, Agreed. They're, they're, they're all there, are, amazing. there are some more like, eh, I don't really want to watch the Hulk. I'd rather watch the new Captain America. Right. But uh, we can forget about Iron Man 2. Yeah, <laughs> but it's they're all good. They're good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there, there's not one that you're like, oh, my God, that was horrible. Yeah, that's what gave me hope. I was like, do you, do you know what this means? Right. <laughs> Star well, Wars has Disney well, money yeah, now. Yeah, but I, but I looked at it like totally from a – Negative Nancy, like of course. oh fuck this. Which it makes sense because you know, if, are you gonna see Mickey ears on Darth Vader now? For sure. So it's and, like, and, and no, it's no, scary. But then, he, but then they came out with that first movie, and I was like, oh, like a shit. deep cellular level of joy. It was crazy. <laughs> uh, like, oh yeah, Cloud Nine. Like it was just so fucking cool. And there's more coming. Yeah. And there's more coming. Well, and it's gonna be good. It is. I I think like I I've told a lot of people I think. I think it's going to be better than Empire, or at least close. Like, it's just like... Rogue One? Oh, yeah. I've, I'm feeling it. I'm I, feel, I get so, so, you know, I love them all, well, so here, I've got seven in your slots. order. In, what, is, what is your order of Star Wars? Okay, I'm going to offend you. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> Three is my favorite. Here's why. Not because... But the, here's the other thing. I look at it from a very specific lens. Okay. I don't see Star Wars as movies. Okay. Ever. Like, I never have. Even right. as a kid, because I saw the original trilogy first. Right. And then when episode one, two, and three came out, it was the backstory to these movies I loved. For sure. So I don't see like the technical, like I never saw Hayden Christensen's acting. I was like, oh, Anakin's like having a real hard time today, right. you know? Right, right, right. So when Obi Wan says in episode four, oh, I fought in the Clone Wars, I know what that is now. Right. Because I've seen the Clone Wars and I've watched these movies. Right. So I look at it from a purely narrative standpoint. Gotcha. So all these extra things, acting stuff, effects means nothing to me right. because it is what it is. Like right. I hated the puppet used in episode one. Up for Yoda. Yeah, that was Because cool. they did a puppet, but they tried to make him younger, and it just looked awful. Yeah, yeah. They I love the episode five and six puppet. It's right, fantastic. Right, right. But to make a puppet younger, it just didn't work. Yeah. And then two, he was CG, and I was like, okay, I'm fine with this over that puppet. Right, right, right. Um, so three. three is my favorite. Okay. Three is my favorite because it was that final piece of everything that I loved, everything I loved before, True. and it fits so perfectly. The fall right. of how is Anakin Skywalker becoming Darth Vader, how are the Jedi and the Republic becoming the Empire, it was right. like... It was perfect. Three is my favorite. It make it, like, I love three for that. It makes I like I will always say I wish they would have done it differently. It sure. definitely explains it. Sure. But at the same time, it's just like there's so many things they could have done better. Like sure. The, the storyline as a whole. Yeah. Great. Agreed. Great. The battling, everything. Sure. Great. But the way it was executed, I was just like, are you? F it's here. It's like a tattoo. Sure. It's it's like, uh, you see the drawing. Mm, yeah. Awesome. 
but then it's like a tattoo, and you're like, well, that's not as good as I thought it was going to be. Right. Somewhere um, in it, the application it, of it, it got I, lost. I do think that it, the the the. the the initial storyline of one, two, and three is great. Agreed. It fills in those gaps. Absolutely. And it's from Lucas. So Absolutely. Obviously, you can't be. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> you can't be like, oh boy, you're wrong. Be like, uh, I created this shit, exactly. dude. Exactly. So it's like, but the execution, like, I just think they could have picked a better actor for Hayden Christensen. Sure. Sure. Uh, they they could have like, Obi Wan was great. Qui Gon, I I know you love Qui Gon, but it's like to me, he's a great made up character. Sure. He's a great character, but he's a a nonsense character like he shouldn't have like <laughs> <laughs> go ahead uh, this is wrong. a safe space <laughs> don't, get, don't get me wrong i do like qui-gon okay I think he's a great character i think he's uh a dumbed down yoda okay like, he's definitely there but it's just ridiculous that he plays no purpose in star wars seeing as how the quote in empire strikes back when 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 um obi-wan said to yoda was, was I any, any different, different when you, you taught me? me? It's like, uh, no, you didn't get taught by him. You got taught by Qui-Gon. So but, but here we go. You ready? Yes. I got to come back for that one. Blow my mind. Are you ready? Yes. Yoda did train Obi-Wan. He trains all the younglings until they get a master. Yeah. So technically, yes. It's technically, but see, the thing is, is it's... Uh, all right. <laughs> kind of. It's a 50 If it's Star Wars trivia, I got you, man. Yeah, for sure. Qui-Gon, no. Qui-Gon served okay, a greater back, back to three. Okay, so three. three. Three's my favorite. Okay. All time. Because of what it is, like, but this a good point. You said a lot of things that you don't like about the prequels were the applications. Right. You don't like the effects in this. You don't like the acting in this. Respect. Those things never registered to me. Yeah, I guess I was so focused. You on know what the I mean? Because standpoint. they're not movies to me. True. It's a, it's there's seven mo- there's seven things. It's all one big story. Right. And I've always seen it that way. That's For why sure. books and comics and all that stuff adds to it. For sure. If I see episode one and Quinlan Voss is in the back, right. I know everything about that character. Right. He's a Jedi and all these things. But he's an extra in episode one. For sure. You know, so it's like right. all these different things. I mean, Wedge. Wedge is just an X-Wing pilot that helped him. But I, we know so many things right. about that makes him awesome. And that has nothing to do with the actor for Wedge. For sure. It's who that character is God, I wish he was in, in the greater that. scope. The guy that you know, I'm so mad that he wasn't in the new one. He's in Rebels. They, they, well, what's stupid is he was, the, the actor said no. I know. And I'm really curious if he's I like, know. man, did I do the right thing? I feel like he's like, oh, I fucked up. For real. Because he had the same outlook I did. Disney did it. Fuck that. Nope. Right? Not and, uh, I don't know that it, that was his reasoning, like, but I feel like It's like at been. the end of uh, The Hobbit, you know, when Thor, and he's like, I've never been so wrong in my entire oh, life. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Anyways, back on track. Uh, yes. Uh, three. three. Three's my favorite. And then one. Episode one? Episode one. Here's why. Qui-Gon. Okay. Okay. Next. Here's, and uh, here's... Qui-Gon is, we'll get on that later. Right. Qui-Gon is the greatest Jedi of all time. We'll get there. Okay. Uh, then six. Jedi? I love Jedi. Okay. Because of the aliens. Jabba's Palace, like, I'm a huge alien right, fan. Right, right, right. Like, you have no idea. I have, I collect action figures. I do the three and three quarters. Uh-huh. They're all aliens. Awesome. I just love the design and the, oh, for sure. like, Nine Numb is one of my all-time favorite yeah, characters. Yeah, Nine Numb, Reese, yeah. the Memorian Guards, e, uh, e Mon. Yeah. That guy's awesome. I mean, the Athorians with the throat calls, right, Hammerhead, right, right, you know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. Like, I love the Doros. I love aliens. Right, right, right. So Jabba's Palace is one of my favorite scenes right. in all of Star Wars. Just so much going right, right, on. Right, and right, right, right. So six, and then five. Empire. I love five. I mean, five is a perfect movie. Right. But the aliens got it a little bit above for, for sure. me for five and six. Right. And then probably seven, four, two. Seven four two. I yeah. love seven. My here's my issue. One, uh, a semi issue that I have with new Star Wars huh. is I love new Star Wars, but I want to see things that we've heard of but haven't seen before. Okay. You know, so like we have Jakku. Jakku's cool, but right. show me Dantooine. Right. Show me stuff that you've talked about, right. but we haven't seen. Instead of creating all these new planets, like right. if you watch Episode Seven, there's a new species called Abanitos. Okay. There's like eight of them. Huh. They're the new Twi'leks. I was okay. like, but why don't we have Twi'leks? Like, I want to see more of what we've seen as opposed to right. this is the new Twi'lek. Right, right, you know right, what I mean? Right, right. I That's my, like, I love it, but I still want to see, like, Ord Mantell, For like, sure. Kessel. Show me Kessel. Right, you right. know, he made the Kessel run. What does Kessel look like? Yeah, I wonder if they might do that in the prequel. Absolutely. Or the, pre- the prequels, the, uh, the in-betweeners. Absolutely. So I'm sure it will get filled in, but that's, right. like, a thing. Um, um, yeah, two's my least favorite, only because, like, it's, 
two, from a technical aspect, is a wonder. It was actually right. the first movie ever shot completely digital. Right. And episode one was the first movie ever shown and, and, and completely digital. So, I, mean, I think I told you about that before. It's so crazy to me that there's no stormtrooper, uh, clone trooper. Yeah, on. never existed. That's so and wild. And Lucas, the genius that he is, he's gone on record saying he always believed we as humanity have a service to do to future generations to adapt technology early. Right. Because it's going to suck and we need to make it better for future right. generations. That's why two looks so weird right. because this is brand new technology because I'm shooting my movie on this right. which is such a risk to make Star Wars oh, yeah, on sure. experimental technology for sure and then you know well, but, but that, we have Avatar but, because of episode 2 but but, but here is with, with that saying sure episode 4, 5, and 6 was experimental technology absolutely so absolutely so it's just what the experimental technology was at that time right you know whereas animation was a new thing CGI like right. here's a good example Jar Jar right okay Ahmed Best Ahmed Best was like the pioneer for mocap, Jar Jar. Right. But everyone hated him so much right. that Gollum is the token, this for is sure. our guy. For sure. So think, imagine being Ahmed Best, the actor for Jar Jar, put everything into this character, but Andy Serkis is the mocap guy. It's true. You know? And it, it's, it, he, he was the, f yeah, I totally see that. So that, that's something that, like, when I heard that, I was like, I feel so bad Snoke. for Ahmed Best. Snoke, exactly, you know? Uh, but yeah, two, two just... I mean the love story. So it bad. had to happen because it had to make but sense see, I, with. I, I hate that. That's like that, that, that's <laughs> why I don't like episodes one, two, and three. Is that love story because Star Wars isn't about love. It's, it's true. It's about the Force. And it's true. Yada, well, yada. think about where the old trilogy is in the timeline. There's an empire. There's, there's no empire yet. Right. There's a republic. So we have to see the fall of everything that was. Right. I really wish they would have. I, would, I wish they would have focused more on everything else. But, the, but those are those are mine. This is my order. Empire. Jedi. Okay. I'm, it's a toss I'm going to make you put the prequels in an order. No, just letting it, you know. It's a toss up <laughs> between The Force Awakens, A New Hope, and then the prequels. I don't even know. Like in the in prequel order, yeah. Phantom Menace, Revenge of the Sith, and probably Clone Wars. Okay. That's fair. The only reason the only reason I say Phantom Menace, Darth yeah. Maul. Darth Maul, one of the he best is, villains. To me, Darth Maul is the only redeeming character of the new ones. Sure. Qui Gon's right behind him. That's fair. That's fair. But the reason why, he's mm -hmm. the new Boba Fett. We don't uh, know shit about him. Sure. He's awesome. He's he got is. a double-edged lightsaber, and he has horns on top of his head. He does. Just like Boba Fett. He has a jet pack. He looks cool as shit. Then he's got a cool-looking gun. <laughs> he was the new Boba Fett, and then you got Clone Wars, and they brought him back, and now he's the spider, and it's like, uh, Yeah, he went crazy. But on that note, thank you yeah, for your time. You. Where can people find you online? Uh, online, you can Google my name, uh, Chris Buckholtz. Or you can go Webworks, the website, uh, webworkstattoo.com, I think. Then Instagram, at Tattooer Chris. Xbox Live, at Tattooer Chris. Or just come by the shop. Sweet. Awesome. I hope to do more of these. They're fun. Right? It's cool, right? Awesome. And...